everyone, this is Mike and Kelsey at Sweetbriar Farm. In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the things that you need to get started raising your own feeder pigs. And this is just for feeder pigs. We call this thing, you just saw me move, the pork slider. And I built this thing, what is this, probably four, four years, years ago? And I built it like a tank. So our worry when we first started was pigs getting out and getting on the, on the, on the loose because we didn't have the proper defense in like we do now. Now we occasionally have a pig or cow get out and it's not that big a deal <laughs> uh, because there's another layer of fence. If you're worried about pigs getting out, I recommend building something like this. We've got four by sixes as runners and then four by fours as cross pieces. And there's hog panels on the uh, sides and then I have a little door that swings in. So this is important for the door to swing in. If you had it swing out, they could potentially push out of the pork slider. And then I just have a little three-sided shelter at the other end with the tin roof to keep them out of the rain when it rains or the snow. So I just hook a chain to this and I bought these like trailer tie-down heavy-duty buckles at Tractor Supply, like six bucks a piece. I can't remember how much money I have in here. The tin was free from somebody. So with this setup, it's kind of like a chicken tractor. I can advance it daily or every other day, depending on their rooting activity. And we raised three pigs in here the first year, just feeder pigs, and they did really well. Plenty of space for them. Right now we use this as a weaning pen because this is basically the only thing that we have that's piglet proof that they really <laughs> can't get out of. So we're gonna be pulling these Berkshire piglets out. I got them sold. And then the other five we're raising out for ourselves. Eventually they'll probably go in a bigger pen here, uh, but they will be in the pork slider here for the next probably month, maybe, yeah. I guess. Yeah, tilling up the field and eating rye. So basically you need food, water, shelter. One thing that caught us by surprise with our first batch of feeder piglets, they were, what did we get, blue bots? So they were mostly pink pigs and they got sunburned. That was something we didn't anticipate. So I think we did end up putting like an extra tarp over more of it to give them more shaded area. Yeah, I had a canvas tarp that I kind of bungee corded to the top to keep them out of the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, pigs love to lay in the sun, but those pink pigs, they, they got sunburned. <laughs> Poor babies. So one of the things that you can use as a feeder, and I've used these, are these auto feeders, gonna show them how it works. Yep, so you just load the feed in the top and it kind of works like a hopper and then the pigs learn very quickly to lift this up and they can chow down in here. So if you're gonna, um, well you, you don't even have to be free feeding, you could just, just load it every morning and every night if you wanted. But. Yeah, I think these are rated for maybe four, four pigs at the most. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go any any more with that single feeder but those are kind of expensive so we all we switched all of our pig feeding to twice a day so now i just use these plastic barrels that i connected together to do a pretty good job they crawl in there and eat and then we just use a big 15 gallon tub for water I did at one point have a 55 gallon drum or 40 gallon drum here with the nipple drinker on here that I strapped to it and I probably will do that again but not right now we have to catch these piglets. I think overall, next to chickens, pigs are the least expensive protein protein, and least expensive to actually get started with. The infrastructure you need is pretty minimal. 
We, we use calf hutches now for our sows and our boar. They train really easy to electric. We use electric netting. So in the past, I've got a video on moving the pigs in pasture. It's a really crappy video, but set up the, the electric netting. I use this to lock the pigs in while I'm moving the fence. I move the pigs in the pork slider and then I can let them out and they use this as their, their shelter. Really easy to manage rather than just setting up uh, pig netting and hoping that they don't escape while you're advancing their, their pasture. So I'm illiterate, but is this something if you didn't have a tractor, could you pull it with your truck? You, yeah, you could pull this with a truck if you had easy ground to work with. We have uh, hilly clay soil, so it, it would be kind of slick. The nice thing about moving it with the tractor, the way I do it, going backwards and hooking it to the bucket, is I can see the pigs and make sure they don't get caught in the back while I am moving it. I, I do have the, the uh, trailer buckles at the back where I can pull it the other way as well. It's hard to see when I am advancing or moving the, the, the pork slider the other way. So. Um, I think it's important, like if you're a person who's been doing chickens with the chicken tractor that's really light that you can just pick up and move and set down, something lightweight like that will not work with pigs. Like yeah. You can't overestimate just how strong they are, even the little ones. It's really surprising. Yeah, they will they'll destroy a regular, <laughs> you know, something with hardware cloth or something like that. You really need to use the hog panels. And you can see here, they've torn this up. I had the that auto feeder there it's kind of strapped to this when we first used it and I think it lasted a couple years before they eventually break the welds on the on the hog panel so they are are strong and they are can be destructive to uh, light duty things I really like having the pigs in here when Mike moves them to new ground every day because they're like this is the best life for a pig, right? They're so happy, they're wagging their tails, everybody's busy digging around for, we have Ryan here and Mike sometimes plants like um, uh, like food plot stuff. So there could be radishes buried under there and turnips and all kinds of goodies in the soil. So it's really good for the pigs and it's really good for the soil too. And we just had probably an inch of rain last night and this morning so it's really wet easy for the pigs to work at and I've mentioned this before in another video when you have pigs in a piece of land especially for a couple days the weed pressure in this spot will be less than over in the spot next to them they uh, eat and dig chop up the seeds from the weeds and they're fertilizing at the same time And there wasn't a whole lot of grass here. The cows had gone through, mowed it down pretty good. But the pigs are finishing the job that the cows didn't do. Mm -hmm. So what will you plant here next? Sweet corn's going into this part of the garden. Yeah. We had the batch of 10 feeder pigs, and I did use the electric net for, for a bigger area. And they were in this spot for about two weeks before I did take them to the butcher. So that's why this is bare ground here. So potatoes are going in here, and then corn, well, sweet corn will go in the rest of this, this field. Other than I keep kind of about a third of this part of the field for the cows to graze on, micro graze on throughout the summer. Cause it's, it's kind of wet back there. So nothing other than grasses really grow. So getting started, started with pigs, food, water, shelter. We feed our pigs. A 16% protein feed uh, from weaning on uh, in the summertime I will ferment the feed to ferment the feed I've got a video that I'll link at the end screen um, it's good for the pigs digestive health it's good to prevent pathogens real easy to do especially if you're just doing a few pigs when we were doing them over the winter time we had more pigs than I could count but uh, that'd be a lot of work to ferment that much feed and then in the winter time we could have done it we could have put the buckets in the greenhouse but then you're just hauling heavy buckets of fermented feed so but we feed twice a day about a about six pounds of, of feed a day per pig we did find when we fermented the food that we were using like we cut our feed bill back about 50 percent when we fermented the feed it was definitely last longer yeah 
you're fill, filling their bellies up with a lot of liquid yeah. as well as the as the food. So, but the pigs grew just as well. Yeah. They they weren't missing any calories. We've had pigs in here in the winter time. Throw some straw down, and they snuggle up in the back there. As long as they have a windbreak and something overhead, is 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 fine. For, for the pigs, but most people that are raising pigs for feeders are doing it in the summertime where you don't really have to worry about the cold weather. They, these, these pigs handle 30 degree nights just fine without any straw. They snuggle up, There's, there'll be steam rolling out of here in the morning when they do wake up, so. And you do wanna wear coveralls when you're working with the pigs so you don't get pig crap all over your clothes. My, my high heels got stuck in the mud back there and I haven't seen them. Yeah, if you have any other questions about starting raising feeder pigs, put them in the comments and we'll get back with you. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.